Hello everyone, it's old Edward here. But you lot probably know me better as that British chap that runs the YouTube channel Scribbles to Screen. Anyway, I'm delighted to be invited on board to Brayden's YouTube channel to discuss some interesting pieces of missing media. This is part 28 now? Oh, it's a never ending rabbit hole. Anyway, I won't keep you lot waiting for any longer now. That would do for the context, let's start the show. Known to be in development since spring of 2000, Climax Studios pitched this potential game as something to fit within a market that had not been seen in prior video games of the time. Of course now we have games like the Fight Night series, but when this game was being pitched and advertised, the 3D boxing game market was relatively untapped. Title Defense separated itself from competitors by boasting a more realistic physics engine, as well as more immersive features, such as distinguishing play styles varying by boxer. It was going to be attempted without motion capture. The game had a planned release for the Xbox and PS2, Dreamcast, GameCube, and PC. Since the Dreamcast version was the original one planned to be released, the most focus was placed on making the game, a Dreamcast game first before releasing it on subsequent systems. Unfortunately though, with the Dreamcast's untimely demise, the game was shelved in 2001 with only screenshots being available today. Keep your eye on this spot. You're about to see June Lockhart and her partner in this circle trying to win $10,000 in less than a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the $10,000 Pyramid! Pyramid Lost Episodes Pyramid is definitely one of the most popular and iconic 70s game shows. For those that don't know, it was a word guessing game where teams of celebrities and contestants compete. The show had various retoolings over the years, but the original series has quite a few episodes. There's a long list of these on the Lost Media Wiki, but as with most Lost game shows from the time, many of the episodes became lost due to tape wiping, which was a common practice at the time. It's unknown how many of these Lost episodes are even findable, as different numbers of archived episodes are rumored to exist. The Game Show Network attempted to acquire the rights to air episodes and reruns, but no one was able to find the tapes. But, as it says on Bill Cullen's website, that doesn't necessarily mean the tapes don't exist. How I Met Your Mother Deleted Scenes In the 21st century, one of the most iconic American sitcoms was How I Met Your Mother. The show was quite unique for its use of its frame story around the rest of the sitcom. The show ran for nine seasons and when it came to its grand finale, it had quite a mixed reception, although its shortcomings may be due down to a portions of the episode being cut out. Various scenes didn't end up in the final episode. From assessment of a video of a table read of the episode, there are about seven deleted scenes, four of which were included on DVD. The lost scenes in question was one to do with Tracy's funeral, and two others that were known to be part of the script. As of right now, the video of the table read is the only way we can experience the unreleased deleted scenes, granted depending if they were ever filmed to begin with. Taking the Long Way Taking the Long Way was a Dixie Chicks album released in 2006. This was after the hiatus they took for a few years prior to the album's release over the Iraq War controversy. Quite a few songs were recorded for this album that ended up being cut, only one of which was ever performed live. The YouTube video of the performance of Whatever It Takes has since been made unavailable. However, because of the unusual amount of songs recorded for the album, it sort of makes sense why some of them were cut but all except one being leaked over time is surprising. It's unknown if an official release by either any individual band member or the label will ever happen. Coronation Street Episode 1202 ITV's Coronation Street has the distinction of being the longest running soap opera in the world. Continuously airing since 1960, as of 2023 it has well over 10,000 episodes. Now being a UK product dating so far back, 
It should be of little surprise for anybody who's done lost media research in that country that from the 50s to the 70s their archiving programmes was a real trial period for Britain, and sadly many of the most famous shows of the day have either several or many missing episodes. Coronation Street in particular had episodes dating from 1964 to 1967 that were missing for a short while, but thankfully these missing gaps have now been recovered. Although there is still one missing programme from the series, episode 1202, which aired on July 26 of 1972. The Master Tapes mysteriously went walkies a short time after the episode first aired. What makes this particular program extra unlucky was that this episode was never sold overseas, meaning that the chances of an extra copy turning up someplace else is less unlikely. To maintain a seamless continuity for when it came to reshowings of the episodes, a new version of episode 1203 was created, where it gives an 8 minute summary of what happened in the prior episode. The only chance that this episode may ever be recovered was if an off air recording was made of it by a regular viewer of the show. Home media recording equipment did very much exist at this time, although it would have been a very expensive hobby, so it's a slim chance at the very least. Looking at the survival ray of other British TV shows, shows of the time, such as Doctor Who, with 97 individual missing programs, and then Zed Cars having 462 missing episodes. It's a true miracle on how complete Coronation Street really is just barding one episode. Infinity Ring Browser Game the Infinity Ring episodic browser game was released alongside the James Dashner novel of the same name in 2012. Episodes were added to the game in tandem with releases of the books in the series, and each one had its own story, coinciding with different points throughout history. Parts of episodes were locked, as in users could only progress so far into the story before being prompted to enter a code found in the book to access the rest of the story. As the game was available on the Infinity Ring website, once the site was taken down long after new books stopped being released, the game went with it. As well as this, the site and or game within was never archived on the Wayback Machine. As a result, only screenshots are available today. Chowder Pop-Up Trivia As I believe that Braden had discussed in a prior program, Pop-Up Trivia was a trend and quite persuasive for a while, with shows such as Pop-Up Video on VH1, but networks often do play reruns of a show's episodes, with various facts and tepids popping up on screen. Chowder was no exception to this in 2010. The first 20 episodes of the show aired on Cartoon Network in this way, leading all the way up to the final episode of the show. These 20 programs with the trivia facts never saw a re-air after the initial premiere, and have by consequence in subsequent years become very difficult to find. A screenshot and a series of promos totaling one minute have been the only things recovered thus far. And as well as this, a Reddit user has claimed that they have two of the final episodes, but so far, no uploads have occurred. Aloha Yokai Watch. As much as Yokai gets hate for basically being a Pokemon ripoff, it actually looks like they did the whole Hawaii thing earlier. In 2015, a web short was prepared to promote tourism in Hawaii, and this would educate Japanese viewers about various cultural traditions, landmarks, and the Hawaiian Islands themselves. In 2015, this video was uploaded to YouTube, but later removed sometime later for an unknown reason. The video has not been mirrored anywhere, either officially or unofficially and it's unknown if that will ever happen. There have been various screenshots preserved from the video giving us a good idea of the overall art style and tone, but no actual clips have survived. The Time Machine Cancelled Movie Publicized in 1859 was H.G. Well, The Time Machine, about an unnamed man of the 19th century concocting a machine that can travel through time, thus travelling to the far future to see the fate of mankind 
and the planet as a whole. There has been a shared number of adaptations of the story. Perhaps the earliest was the 1949 BBC Live production, which was reportedly very faithful to the book. Unfortunately, no recordings were made of it, so unless you were lucky enough to witness it at the time, there's no way to re-experience it. However, easily the most well-known adaptation of the story was the 1960 Hollywood feature film produced under George Powell, which just so happens to be one of my all-time favourite movies. <laughs> In terms of media, film and television, this was for a short while the most famous rendition of a time travel story, before the like of Doctor Who and the TARDIS and Doc and Martu of the DeLorean. The film only covers the first half of the book, where the time traveller, named George in the movie, witnesses the struggle between the Eloi and the Morlocks. In the second half, the time traveller travels even further into the far future, where the planet Earth is dominated by enormous crabs. This portion of the book was actually a huge inspiration for Dougal Dixlin, who would go on to make a biology book called After Man, speculating on what animals may evolve into in the future. The producer of the 1960 movie, George Powell, intended to use the second half of the book as a foundation for a possible sequel, but from the recollection of Rob Taylor, the main star who played George in the movie, records that Powell tried desperately hard to convince the studio to do the follow-up. Despite a script being written, they weren't overly interested in the idea. George would pass away in 1980, never making that follow-up. However, a year after his passing, a novelization was made and adapted from his script, featuring George's son as an adult learning about his deceased parents, and eventually building a time machine to his own design to hopefully save his mum and dad from death which eventually leads him to the far future where he's got to save the last of humanity from a planet infested by giant insects. However, within subsequent years, this book is now out of print and is really rare and expensive to come across, making it cursedly inaccessible yet again to the public. In 1993, a TV special was made about the making of the production by the end of the documentary. It featured a short film returning the actors, Rob Taylor and Alan Young to their respected roles, seeing where the characters have been after the events of the original. So while not being feature length, we still semi got that sequel in a different capacity. There have been stories of Warner Brothers showing interest into readapting the book, and if they had desires to more faithfully follow the story, then perhaps going with George Powell's concept of making it a two-part film may be a sensible way to go. Shroomtube Around the mid-2010s, the trend of lost media videos really started to pick up. You could possibly even say that Scribbles and I wouldn't be here if that never happened. Because lost media content on YouTube has been around as long as it has, at this point it should be no surprise that some YouTube content about lost media has become, well, lost. It's even happened on this very channel. Probably the most famous story of this happening was the YouTuber ShroomTube, who made a series called Lost Media Fridays, which later changed to being called Lost Media Mondays. Every week he would cover a different piece of lost media, which is how the show got its name. Behind the scenes, however, there were some blockages to the point that ShroomTube deleted not just his channel, but his entire social media presence altogether. I feel it would probably be disrespectful to speculate on why this happened, so I won't go into it, but this man was an inspiration to a lot of creators, myself included, so I hope he's doing well now. Some mirrors of a few episodes of his show have been uploaded to YouTube, but the full series has yet to be recovered. Big thanks to scribbles to screen for being in this video. Seriously, check this guy's channel out. He makes some top-notch videos. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.